Yeah? Right, lovely. Now, all we just use is a white little handkerchief, yeah? And then just my hand. Now, if I take the white handkerchief and I push it into my hand, now it goes in white and it comes out red. Yeah? So if you keep pushing it inside and pulling it out the other side, it changes colour. Does that look good? It looks brilliant. Yeah, it looks brilliant, yeah. brilliant doesn't it? And if you just keep doing that, and eventually you've got to the point where you just just fold it all the way in, okay? And then you can just take it out. Now, of course, you've got to be careful with this hand. You mustn't show it. So never let them see what you've got on there. Okay? Now, I did say that I would show you how to do it. Now, it's quite simple, really is that you've got a second handkerchief, yeah? And before you start, so when, you know, uh, the um, previous person was, was working there, I was actually at the side there, <coughs> taking the handkerchief and pushing it into my hand, okay? But you don't let anyone see this, okay? That's very, very important. Nobody sees you preparing this by pushing this red silk into your hand. And then when you're ready, you know, you can just take this handkerchief and you're ready to come up. Now, of course, if you are just hold your hand like this, people will get very suspicious out of it. Yeah? So you have to wave this around a lot. That's called misdirection. This is called concealment. Of course, never show this hand. <laughs> okay? Otherwise they'll see you've got a second handkerchief in there. Now when you're ready, you can just Push the white handkerchief in, so it goes in white and it comes out red. You with me so far? Yes. Lovely. Okay, and you just keep doing that, and pushing that one in there, with one hand, and just pulling it out there. Now, what you must not do is this. That's bad. <laughs> because it's pretty <coughs> obvious you've got more than one handkerchief. Okay, so make sure you finish tucking this one in before you pull the other one out. Okay? And that's all there is to it. So, hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> okay, now, I've been uh, fishing around in some of my old magic books. Okay, because when I first started doing magic, okay, we didn't have things like DVDs or downloads. Okay, so all the older musicians, you know, uh, Keith, you remember this, yeah? We, we used to have to use things like books. Okay, you had to read books, look at the pictures. Okay, and I actually found, this is, I don't know, this is very old. Okay, it's like a little manuscript. And, and uh, this tells you how to do the trick. Okay, and I found this other one, which I'm actually going to have a go. Uh, do it tonight, yeah? Okay. Now, it, it, it's not particularly detailed, but let me just read it out to you. It's uh, The Vanishing Bottle by Mr. U. R. Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, remember, this probably goes back to the 1950s, so the, so the language that this was um, typed in, okay, with a typewriter, okay, not you, bless you. <laughs> um, Dear Brother Magician, you have now in your possession a very near miracle. I'm impressed already. I don't say that as a selling point, for by the time you read this, you will have bought this manuscript and its contents. You have paid good money, but in return, you have got good magic, and I'm sure you will agree as you read further. I'm indebted to Mr. You Are Done for giving me his permission to release this manuscript to the magical fraternity. Of Mr. You Are Done, all I can say it is here grand, it, that he is a grand fellow, a gentleman and a fine magician. <coughs> I am sure that he is a name that many magicians will have come across and would have had dealings with at some point. Yeah. Most dealings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we have great pleasure in sharing this with you and hope that you take great pleasure in performing this to your audience who will be astounded by what they see. 
Okay, now we get to it now. Right, now, you will need a bag. Okay, I've got one bag. Dealer supplies. Okay. Should we see there, going there, inside of it. You will also need a bottle of wine. Uh, please make sure that the bottle is empty prior to performing. Yeah. So, my bottle of wine. <coughs> I'll just make sure it's empty prior to performing. Yeah. Oh. So, I'm just following the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you place a bottle inside the bag, you can make it seem as though the bottle has indeed vanished. Secret. I shouldn't really read this, but never mind. As you turn the bag upside down, by careful handling of the bag with the bottle inside, it will seem as though the bottle <coughs> has vanished. Woo! If anyone in the audience suspects that anything suspects anything, simply change hands. <laughs> Your audience will be amazed and clap thunderously. <laughs> Remove the bottle from the bag again. This can be repeated several times, but do not overdo it as some people may become suspicious as to the secret. <laughs> you don't do it! I'll play along, I don't care. You don't like that, do you? No. Neither do I. Make sure the rope is, is genuine, it doesn't stretch, it doesn't pull inside out, it doesn't do anything weird. Okay? Now, Mick, can you just repeat after me? <coughs> what what you've got the long one. So can you just say um, that this is just a normal piece of rope? This is just a normal piece of rope. Lovely. Okay? Because you had quite a lot to do there, really, didn't you? Yeah? Okay. How about yours? This is just a normal piece of rope. It's just a normal piece of rope, so you didn't have quite so much to do there, did you? Okay, Mike. This is all piece of rope. Yeah, you feel a bit sort of inadequate, really, don't you? Yeah, this is nice. But look, I'll tell you what, you have a look at this one. Okay, I don't want you to feel as though you, you know, you're sort of. No, okay, right. Right, so we've got three pieces of rope that have been examined by the audience. So we've got a short one, we've got a medium sized one, and we've got a long one. Okay, now, if I said to you that these three pieces of rope are actually all the same size, what would you say? No. So I'm finished. I'd say the wine's working. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, if we just try this, and then we can actually get, unless we're all on the bottle of wine, three pieces of the rope, now all the same size. So two, and then three pieces of the rope. Yeah? Now, just to make things a little bit easier, Let's just get rid of one so we can use two pieces of the rope, okay? Makes it easier, but I'll tell you what, should we just use one piece of rope? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, now my favourite little bit is if I take the ends this side, the middle of the rope here, now if I can make the ends disappear from this side and go to this side, and the middle of the rope go from here over to there. <coughs> Now there's two ways you can do this. There's the easy way, which is not very impressive, which is do that. Okay. The other way is to remove the rope from there. Oh. <laughs> and then put the ends about there. Okay. 
Okay, let me just explain this. So we've got two ends. It all works with static electricity. Okay. All we have to do is give a little rub there, give a little rub there, and then we can just join the ends back together. Which is great, but there's not really a lot you can do with it. So if we just put the ends back on. Okay, now if you just have this one back again and tie these together. So we've got one piece of rope tied to the other piece of rope. Yeah? Now this knot, which is where the two ends of the two ropes have been tied together, can't do nothing. They can't move. Because that's just silly. And then just move them back. Now, if you don't believe that, let's just undo this and we can see the two pieces. Okay, now we went from one piece of rope to two pieces of ropes to three pieces of ropes, all the same size. Now we did start the whole thing off with three pieces of rope, all different sizes. 